Hi, and welcome to the Swell Design YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to go over how to add new events to an event page on your Wix website. So there's two ways to get to the events. One is you can go into the editor like you see here, open up your pages and find your events page. The other way is to access the events from your dashboard. To get to the dashboard, you can just click select site from the first page that you'll see when you go to wix.com and you log in. And on the left side, you'll see that you have a tab specifically for events where you can add new events, check out previous events, create drafts and other things. So if we're in the editor and we wanna manipulate or change or add an event, you're just gonna hover over the events area. And you can see that when you hover, it highlights this area up here to let you know that this is a Wix event box. Then you can click on manage event. A separate window will open. Which brings us back to the dashboard area we saw in the other tab. So if you need to add a new event, if it's similar to an event you already have, you can click the three dots and duplicate. That way you're keeping a lot of the same settings and you can just simply update the time, the date, this is good for something. If you have it maybe monthly, but the location changes or the time might change, but everything else maybe remains the same. To add an entirely new event, you can click this button. And then you're gonna see two different options. You can see that there's a ticketed event option, and then it specifies that this is an offer paid or free tickets. You can set currency and tax good for classes, workshops, or conferences. And then the second option is an RSVP event where you're not necessarily needing to charge any money or keep as close of track of who's joining your events, but you at least want people to be able to RSVP so that you do have a list. For this one, we're just gonna go forward with the ticketed event. As you scroll down, you can give your event a name, You can set the specific date and the time frame. You can choose your time zone and display it. If it's a virtual event, this is important to turn on because everybody might be joining from different time zones. And then you can choose the location. If you choose online, you can then write any information here that you'd like, if it takes place on Zoom, if it's a webinar, additional information here. In a physical location, it should, as you start to type, generate addresses so it can verify that it is an accurate address. So for the sake of this, I will just put in an old address I had when I was younger. and then you can create the event. Once you've got the basis for the event set up, you're gonna see that you have additional options and information that you can input. You can add a short description or teaser. You can set categories if you have a lot of events and need to separate them. You can add a cover image that will display. I would recommend doing that if you can. Within Wix, you do have access to media from Wix, so some free stock photos. So maybe we utilize that and we just use something generic. To add to that section. 
here you can see that you have the event information that you already input, but then you also have the option to set it as a recurring event and then you would get some additional settings to choose the dates and different information. This would be good for something that is a monthly meeting or a weekly meeting um, and that that information is going to be relatively similar each time. Then you're just verifying the address and then we have video conferencing. So if you want to set this up, you can connect Zoom if you have a Zoom account and then it will generate links for people as they sign up automatically. That is probably the option I would recommend. This is a new feature from Wix. Um, I actually have not even tested this out yet. That's how new it is. Um, so I would just say for now, you know, trusted and true Zoom. I've done that plenty of times through my own website and it does work well and generate meeting links on your behalf. If you wanna provide a detailed itinerary or event schedule, you can do that here and set additional items. If there's a session for a certain amount of time, you can add that and then add as many as you'd like in this area. In this section, you can add a more detailed event description and just type out information that you'd like your visitors to have access to, to be able to review. And the groups option uh, likely won't be implemented for any of your sites if you're watching this, um, but if that's something you're interested in, let me know and we can go over that in a separate meeting. So then we can save and we can save as a draft or save and publish. I'm gonna go ahead and save as a draft. And then you'll see we also have tabs across the top here. If your event needs to have tickets, you can set that up here by clicking get started. You can title the ticket. You can add a description of what's included in the ticket or not included. And then you can say whether it is free or has a cost and you can limit the quantity if you'd like. Down below, you'll be able to set the ticket price if it is a cost or if it's free, that section will disappear. The ticket policy is anything that your visitors or people that might register for your event need to know. If it does cost money, this would be a good place to put in if it is refundable or not. Uh, what's the cancellation policy, uh, different things like that. Once you have all the sections here filled out, you can save and move on to the next section. Registration. For registration, you can edit how they register. If it is through your actual events page on your own website, you would keep it in that first bullet point. If they need to register on a separate website like Eventbrite um, or a Facebook event page, you can click the second bullet and input that URL. If your guests don't need to register and it's simply open to the public with no limit, then you can select the third bullet point. Emails. Actually, let's go back to registration for a minute. In event policies, you'll be able to click this and type in specific terms and conditions or refund policies for the customize your registration form. Maybe you need very specific information when people register other than just their contact information. This is a good place to go in and you can get a preview of what your form currently looks like and then add additional options of what you might need. This could include phone number, you can make it required, or it can be something custom. Maybe you wanna provide shirts to the people that register. So you can ask things like, what is your shirt size? And then you can choose what kind of option that people can choose from. So I would say for this one, a drop down menu would work well. And then you can put things in that relate to the question above. And then you can see how that looks here. So we'll just save that and go to the previous section. As we move into the email tab, 
You can manipulate and customize emails that are sent to the people that register or RSVP for your events. For example, the confirmation email. You'll be able to see a preview here of what that looks like. You can customize the subject line, customize the body of the email, and then by default, the details will be included as well. All of the other emails will, work, will look and function in a similar way. If you need to set up a cancellation or a reminder email, you can do that as well. Once your event is live and people have either been purchasing their tickets or RSVPing, you will be able to use these final two tabs. Under orders, you will be able to see who has purchased their tickets, how many orders there are, and keep track of everything. The guest list will have names and contact information for the people that are going to be attending your event. So once we've checked everything under these tabs and it looks good, you can go back to the events page, preview the draft if you'd like, or if you feel ready, you can publish that draft. So now nothing shows up and we can move into the published category to see our most recent event. Once you have that done, you can hit the X here. The page will refresh. And for me, I believe I only have one item showing. Let me just check our events one more time to see if I need to do anything else for it to show up. Here we go. So we need to show our upcoming events and you'll see that now it is highlighted and showing up here on the events page. So if I were to publish this, I can then view my site at my URL. I can access that page. I don't currently have my events page set up as a tab, but you should. So you should be able to click on it here in your menu and then end up in your events page. When you click on your event, you'll be able to see all of the details that we just input on the back end down below and see how it's going to function for your, for your user. They can input their information, input their shirt size or any additional items, and they can continue through the registration process. Once they have registered, they will receive that automatic email with all the details and you will have access to their contact information. So that is a brief overview of how to add new events to your Wix website. So you can keep up to date, keep track of everything If you want to play around with the layout, you can click settings here, hover over layout and see that there are a few different options on how to view your items. If you have any questions or need any assistance adding events to your website, feel free to send me an email and I can provide you with the link and we can always set up a Zoom screen share and go over this together. I hope this video was helpful and you're able to add events to your own website. I'll look forward to seeing what you add and what events you have coming up. Thank you.